Welcome to My Smart Side. When experiencing a loss, for example, maybe we'll say of a dear sweet grandma that lost a battle with cancer, some people go through the stages of grief. They may or may not go through them in order, and they may or may not experience all of them. Some people don't go through the stages of grief, and some people research them, make an educational YouTube video about them, and act them out. Help. There are different models of the stages of grief. Um, let's change the background music. This one is too happy. There we go. This one is perfect. And perfectly titled. The most common model has five stages. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. This is also called the Kubler-Roth model named after the psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and described in her book On Death and Dying. Colin Murray Parks' model has four stages based on John Bowlby's theory of attachment. Shock and numbness, yearning and searching, despair and disorganization, and reorganization and recovery. There is also a seven-stage model shock and denial, pain and guilt, anger and bargaining, depression, upward turn, reconstruction and working through, and acceptance and hope. I will be describing Kubler-Ross's five-stage model, denial. Nobody wants to hear bad news, especially life-changing news. Nobody wants to know that they will never be with the thing or person they love again on earth. No, grandma's not dying. Grandma is just sick on top of her cancer, right? At first, they don't want to believe it and will outright deny it. She's just sleeping and will wake up soon. Uh, the, the cancer treatments are working, but they just take time to cure her. Grievers going through the denial stage tend to feel numb. They do what they can to continue everyday life and don't want to talk about the bad news. Uh, don't worry, Grandpa's fine. Uh, we will be able to enjoy another Christmas with brunch with her and Grandpa, my aunt and uncle, my cousins, my parents, and my brother. No, I'm sorry. That will not happen. Anger. We can't keep denying the bad news forever. We can't keep saying we will see them again and then actually not ever see them again. When we realize this, we naturally start to feel angry. Now listen here, life, you son of a... Rocket. We may think that it is unfair that this shouldn't happen. We may already know that it is going to happen, but we don't like its irreversible inevitability. She was a very nice lady. There is no way she deserved to suffer from that deadly disease. We may get mad at other people, even if they tried their best to prevent it as much as possible. The doctors in that hospital were supposed to know how to cure it. Maybe if not cured, they should have known how to treat it. Anger does not have to be, as Healthline says it, clear-cut fury or rage. It can mask itself in feelings like bitterness or resentment. Why can't she have a treatment that didn't make her feel sick? Would her body adapt to the medication or at least she would still be alive? Bargaining. You start to come up with ways to try to get out of the situation. Hold on, I just switched from plural third person to plural first person to senior second person. Anyway, you think about what you could have done differently. I could have asked to temporarily move with her. She has an extra room. I could have attended the school that my father attended instead of the one I attended, which is actually the one she attended. Maybe you tried to make a deal with God. Yes, that was a funny story. From reading her obituary, I found out uh, she attended a school in the northern part of the county. Then she moved to the southern part of the county, and my father attended school there. 
Then he moved back to the northern part of the county, and I attended the same school she attended. Excuse me, can you try to make a deal with God? Oh, um, well, I understand that God knows what he is doing. I think that she must be sacrificed for God's plan, but I can try to bargain. Hey, God, if you get rid of her cancer, I will... I don't know. Um, I guess I will discontinue my YouTube channel? No. Convert them to Christian channel? Well, no. They are already run by a Christian. I have tried to bargain, but I can't do it. Oh. I've got it. I know that won't happen. Just you're not supposed to mention that. Depression. Which person should I choose? I'll choose the singular first person. So, I realized that none of the bargainings will work. The past is in the past, and God has his plan in motion. Grandma's gone. I can't get her back or spend more time with her. Some symptoms of depression include lack of sleep. Oh, Grandma. I miss her. I can't see her familiar face anymore. I can't hear her gentle voice. feel her, her hugs anymore. Loss of appetite. She can't come to my house for dinner anymore. She and Grandpa loved my father's grilling. Of course, why wouldn't they? My father's the grill master of our household. They loved my mother's lasagna, especially Grandpa, I think. Grandma can't go to her son's or daughter's house for Christmas brunch anymore. Extreme sadness. Crying. Uh, unable to concentrate on... What am I talking about? You know what? 2020 is a sucky year anyway. I'm gonna say it. Coronavirus. A nice middle-aged man, almost elder, who used to go to my church. A nice elder shut-in couple that used to go to my church before they were shut-in. Together in the same month. A nice elder lady that used to go to Nana's church. A man that did agricultural work for Grandad in a vehicular accident. They all died for different reasons, but none from the coronavirus. Acceptance. He grieved. Now he is ready to face the new normal. Grandma's gone, but it's bound to happen to everybody. Don't worry about him. His Asperger's can make this stage easy. Yes. In fact, I haven't really experienced the other stages significantly at all. Of course, this acceptance does not mean that I wanted it to happen, just that I am prepared for it. He may realize that, maybe, this loss is better for the departed person. Grandma is not suffering anymore. She is enjoying the beauty and comfort of heaven. Psychom says that he may get sad again while thinking about the departed person. But, the good days tend to outnumber the bad days. If you learn something new, click the like button. If you want to learn more things, click the subscribe button. You will learn more from me next time. And here is a list of my sources. Uh, Cancer.org, Healthline, Help Guide. Thanks.
Uh, you can read them. I read them as Cancer, Grief, Healthline, Health Guide, Psych Central, Psychom, Therapist Aid, Very Well Mind, and Washington, and WebMD. Some people research them, make an educational YouTube video about them, and act them out. There are different models of the stages of grief. I will be describing Kubler-Ross's five-stage model. Denial. No, I'm sorry. That will not happen. Anger. It can mask itself in feelings like bitterness or resentment. Bargaining. Just, you're not supposed to mention that. Depression. What am I talking about? Acceptance. So I have my notes in. What are my script in Google Drive? There is a something in Google Drive where if it loads a few pages at a time, when you get to the bottom of one page, it'll freeze for a while while it's loading the next page. And so I have to wait and wait and wait. Okay, there we go. Psychom says that he may get sad again while thinking about the departed person. But the good days tend to outnumber the bad days. Loading, take time again. The reason why it has to load again this time because I previously changed the font size because from back here without these, I can't read the script. But then I've set the font size back because I'm closer to the computer. Okay, let's see. She was a Lots of appetite. 
do that later. Come back to it. You know what? Oh. I just now remember to be I want to be my appear to my bed. So now they can Read the script. 